You're about to see actually the first film I ever made in 1963. I'm a young filmmaker, I live on Long Island, and I want to be a movie maker. And my mother buys me for, I think, $100, a Bolex wind-up camera, 16 millimeter. That's the shot. Got to wind it up again, take another shot. Little teeny uh, rolls of film, and I'm looking for a subject. And a guy comes to me and he says, hey, David, do you know about the ducks on Riverhead, Long Island? No, I never had a duck, actually. Well, the ducks of Long Island are famous, and in Riverhead, there's a big farm, and on that farm are migrant workers who come to work with the ducks for the farmer, and they live in duck houses, he said. And he was an early civil rights advocate, a kid my age, and he says, let's go out there one weekend, the boss is not there, and film these people. So I say yes, not knowing that there's any real danger involved. In fact, later, somebody got shot for going onto this guy's farm. Um, so we go there, and what I see is really sad. I had never seen anything like this. I came from the lower middle class, Levittown, Long Island. I had seen things on television of migrant workers in the South or picking a fruit, but I'd never seen these duck farms, which were just awful. The ducks weren't there when I was there, but the people were living in the duck houses. And they were so kind and open, willing to talk with me. I think you're gonna find this a very touching moment in American history and a pretty sad moment. And I'm gonna tell you at the end something very good that came because I spent that weekend and made Got to Move. This is Long Island, where in 1776, General Washington lost 1,500 men and 30 guns battling for liberty, and on whose eastern shore the clipper ship Savannah was wrecked. Walt Whitman was born here. A U-boat once came ashore here. Lucky Lindy took off here. Long Island, home of the great Gatsby, playground of the infamous Social Register mansion wreckers, gathering place for ghosts and mysteriously moving objects, and a promised land for hundreds of thousands of suburbanites. To millions of restaurant goers all over the country, Long Island is known for its two famous delicacies, ducks and potatoes. These industries and several others in eastern Suffolk County provide work for a segment of our population, some of our neighbors, if you will, who are the subject of this film. What made you come up north? I heard a whole lot of big money was making up here, uh, and I thought I just thought I could get some of it. House. House. Somewhere where somebody can live. Right now? Yeah. Housing for sure. Uh huh. That's right. House. I have my way by, I take a bulldozer and push them all down. That's to live up to me, that's what I do. I take a bulldozer and let's go right across, right on down the line and push them all down. They had somewhere else to go, I know I, know I wouldn't be here. Not me. Mm -mm. No, sir. Not yet. You see, I'm used to everything nice. But a place like this year, you can't put nothing nice in it. I can speak up to my, for myself. Yeah, I can't speak up to myself at home. Now, I'm out of Virginia, too. But I'm telling the truth. 
and I ain't got no house nowhere. Oh, no, and, and if I don't pay rent here, this man will put me out, and then I'll be fetched in the street. Now, man, I may claim my right. I'm getting the street. Well, I didn't say you didn't have one. I said I ain't got that. I ain't got the six foot, and I hope I don't get it soon. <laughs> now, that's all we got. I'm telling you, look like it is. I'm on it. I don't own nothing but me and my wife and I my don't children. Tell no if I you leave here and go to Chicago, I ain't got nothing in Chicago. And that's my boy right over there, one lane that smoke that cigarette. I said, you're not going to get this house here like that. So she said, well, let's go see. I said, all right. <laughs> so we went to the door and we knocked. He said, uh, you got an ad in the paper here. Well, you want to rent this house? He said, yeah, but I rented it. This was in uh, January. He said, yeah, but I rented it uh, December. I said, well, why are you running the ad? He said, well, it just ain't took it out. Yeah, but you know, during the summer, you work around here for a dollar an hour, maybe a dollar and a quarter. And you live on these farms and premises. See, well, they don't charge you nothing for living uh, on their premises in their house, you know. Now, after they get their crop in or the season is in, well, some, sometimes the, uh, the season is, is bad, and uh, you haven't saved yourself no money. Well, you know how much you can save out about about 50 bucks a week. You got four or five head of kids, and then as soon as he get his crop in and, and bam, you know what done happened then? He tell you to get out. So you got to go now. So where's you going? Now this potato business, uh, there's no unemployment or nothing behind that. These packing houses, you know. Nothing behind that. You doesn't make that much when you work and then when they're finished, goodbye, that's all. You live in one house here, and the other one down there at the end, he, he, can, uh, he, he can be washing his face, or you can tell when he get up and out to bed to get a glass of water or something like that. Now, that's a the house. There's no privacy here. Oh, this is nowhere. This is nowhere for This is nowhere for a dog to live in. Look, he had ducks here. He even moved his ducks. If the place wasn't good enough for his duck. So when the health inspector comes down here, he only goes to the cafes, that's all. I never seen a health inspector around none of these houses. Rats don't eat you up. The filth will eat you up. The roach bug, the chinch, the lice. Get hot, the, the maggots and shoot, man. I don't want no more of these. Look, you know me. Dog, please come in at it. They don't have money enough to go buy them a good pint of whiskey. So what it do? They buy them a good some pint of whiskey and make yourself satisfied. That's the same thing they do by these houses. They can't find a decent house to live in, so what it do? He live into this pit. And eventually he'll turn right like it. Right like it. Bam! Do I try to keep her butt home now? All the way into something. Shut up! I don't know why. Shut up, bro. Why the case? I don't know why they don't play together. Look at him, Marshall. Nowhere. It, it, it's not even a decent place where you can go take a. You know what I mean. Fifteen dollars a week. Fifteen dollars a week. Yeah, fifteen dollars a week. You got a toilet inside? No. 
How can I stay clean and don't have nowhere to take a bath at? Oh, well, then you have to use a tub, you know, one of them uh, number two tubs or whatever you call it, you know, the big round tub. You get up in the morning, you go to work. You come back, you may walk right into nothing where you used to sleep at. Then the, you, if you go to work days, who you were to death, if, if that, suppose somebody sleep down there, uh, the house catch a fire, down there. If you don't move down at this end, you, you, you burn up again. You just don't know. These things with one door, one one up. Over there, uh, the, the other week, just before this, before this thing happened to me, Three o'clock in the morning, that's when this fire break out over there. It's about seven, twelve families live over there. One way out, upstairs, and the steps burn down. How many kids you have surviving now? Two, four. I have four. I have three dead. One died childbirth, and the other two died there. When we came in, I seen the smoke, and I ran back to the house. And Lord, she was screaming, and I saw little mama, my other daughter. And I said, we're princess. She said, I told Poop to come out, but Poop wouldn't come out. And I called and called and called, and she went out to me. Then I went up, and I left front when I broke that through and pulled that stream out, and I couldn't see nothing then. And so we waited and waited till the five minutes come, and the five minutes come. I walked away from the house then, because I figured she was dead, you know, because it was so long. Because they didn't come after one o'clock when they got you. And my husband, he found the, the little girl arm. Who are you talking about right back there? I saw the little girl arm. But the little girl was already buried. They didn't like to me. They was burned. They were just, they, 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 they wasn't burned, nothing. But the ones that got inside of them, the bird had come. It was just like the first. I kissed one of the baby and looked and the little skin moved off her jaw, you know. This is, you know, it's funny. But you, you take, you take people like us. It's funny. Well, we ain't the, we ain't the, we ain't the, we ain't the best people in the world. But now everybody, of course, you see, go out there and pick up a potato or something. It, it is not bad, but they just can't do no good. I guess there's more people here now than was 12 years ago. I guess it is. It's more crowded in here now than it was 12 years ago. But that's about all. The place and the people have been looking the same and doing the same for the last 15 years, I guess. And people from the NAACP and from everywhere else, they used to come, they took pictures, they did this, like I said before, and they talked and they talked and they talked, and that's been going on for years, and nobody never done nothing. Nobody never did anything. This year thing's been starting for a long time, and they ain't got nowhere yet. Somebody should do something. Somebody should try to help somebody. This movie was shot on the last weekend in May, 1964. Less than a month later, two of the homes you just saw had been destroyed by fire. A man, a community, a civilization either takes responsibility or it does not. There is no middle course. To have seen with one's own eyes the terrible price of indifference, be it global or local, is lesson enough. Or is it? A housewife can shove just so much trash under the rug. Eventually, the room will stink. The furniture will tilt and people unable to keep their balance will fall down.
was a sad story. It was horrible to see. So I take a risk. I send the documentary in 1964 to President Lyndon Baines Johnson, Washington, D.C., the White House. What a crazy idea. Is anybody going to respond? Somebody responds and says, we like your film. We've shown it to the president. We're going to show it to Congress. Congress? Holy moly. David Hoffman is on his way, and the issue of the migrant workers is seriously being looked at. And in fact, partially due to this movie, I don't really know how much, legislation is passed to protect migrant workers so they don't live in these horrific conditions. So the film was successful. I was proud of the film and proud to make something happen for the migrant workers, and it kind of launched me on my career. Thank you very much for watching this. David Hoffman, filmmaker, please subscribe. And Patreon, if you're so inclined. If you could support me, www.patreon.com. Take care.